Can a bypass oil filter with a really familiar filter element really eliminate the need for oil changes? Can it take this and turn it into this? Does Hotshot Secret really have the solution for viscosity, contamination, and alkalinity? We'll find out when we test our oil in three to six months. But before we can figure that out, we're gonna need to get the oil pan replaced on this thing and find out whether or not you do in fact need to Whoa. pull the engine out Turn it upside down, like Ford says, in order to change an oil rusty pan. A rusty oil pan. Now, I've never removed a oil pan from a 7.3, Caitlin, but um, I imagine the same principles apply anywhere else I've worked, which is a big enough hammer will do just about anything. Well, guys, we're back this week on Caitlin's 41 Ford with a legendary 7.3 power stroke in it. Best diesel engine ever made? Fight that out in the comments. All I'm saying, whistling diesel hasn't destroyed one yet. But let me get you up to speed on Caitlin's build here if you haven't been following along. She bought this truck after selling some goats from a neighbor of ours in Colorado. It had been parked behind his barn since 1975. We brought it here to Ohio last summer and we began building it this spring for her first vehicle when she gets her driver's license at the end of this year. And our friends at Lubrication Specialties, the parent company for Hotshot Secret and Franz, are sponsoring this build and this episode. And we are super excited to be working with them because they've got products that I've been using for years. So we're excited to have them along for the ride on this bad monkey. I, I don't know why I called it bad monkey. What stupid thing is that to say? Caitlin's down here. She's going to be snagging the bolts out of the rusty oil pan and removing the bolts that go through this cross member for the engine mounts and then the trans mount uh, cross member back there. So we can actually slip this out under the gantry crane, lift the engine, drop the pan, replace it with a brand new one that's not leaking like a Cummins and put it all back together so that we can fill it up and attach our bypass oil system. So. That's what's on the docket for today. Don't go anywhere. And if you are going somewhere, make sure to subscribe before you do. Now you might be asking yourself, what's a bypass filtration system? I'm glad you asked. Franz's bypass filtration system is one of the earliest commercially available bypass filtration systems available on the market. Your OE oil filtration system was known as a full flow filtration system, which means every ounce of oil that goes through your system goes through the filter first. And you might ask yourself, is this really necessary? Or if this can filter out 96% of contaminants and down to two microns, as opposed to the eight to 20 that your OE filter is gonna give you. For those of you who don't speak Micronese, two microns is about one red blood cell and a human hair is about 70 microns. Why not just filter all of your oil with a bypass filtration system? Well, the answer to that is any filtration system is balancing three things, flow, pressure, and filtration. If you're going to filter down to two microns, you're gonna have to have an enormous amount of oil to be able to keep up with the system's demand. Also, you're not gonna be able to keep the pressure up when you're passing through such a tight filtration system. So a bypass system actually works independently from your full flow filter system on your motor. In the application of a 7.3 power stroke, the oil is gonna exit out through the filter housing under pressure, up through this filter housing, and out back into the crankcase, fully bypassing your oil system. Basically, this is the most efficient commercially available bypass filtration system on the market. So in combination with regular oil analysis from Hotshot Secret and the addition of their FR3 friction reducer and TBN booster, fixing the alkalinity problem, fixing the lubricity problem, you're gonna be able to extend the life of your oil basically indefinitely. Now, how do I know that? Because right now on the road, Hotshot Secret has two big rig trucks with over 100,000 miles since their last oil change. There's a reason everything they sell is labeled as powered by science. Hotshotsecret.com with the discount code you see on the bottom of the screen here for any of your orders on any of these and more products. Don't forget guys, they make products for gasoline engines as well as diesel. So check them out today and pick yours up with this discount code right here. Now Caitlin had previously drained all the oil out of this system, but we had not taken the filter off. So she's removing the filter right now. It's just pouring down the sides. Why is it doing this? Because it's just draining all the excess oil that was in the oil cooler back through there. I do not have a good hold on this. Don't drop it. Okay. Just turn it upside down in that pan.
You mean we have to lift the engine up? I mean we have to remove the engine mounts and actually lift the engine with the chain hoist outside. What? Yeah. It's got to go up in the air so we can get this pan out. What do normal people do? Normal people? Yeah. I don't know. Keep putting oil in. Why would they make it so you have to take off the mounts and lift it up so you can get this out? Uh, I don't know. That'd be a question for the Ford engineers. This is stupid. All right. We're looking at the last bolt on the uh, motor mount up here. I can't get a socket in there. So I've got a box end wrench on it with a pipe going back there to Caitlin. She's going to smack the end of that pipe with a big mallet, hoping to drive that wrench forward this way, break it loose. I don't know how I'm going to smack this. But... You're going to have to get way behind it. You're in the wrong spot. Like here? Just do whatever you got to do to be able to hit the end of it to drive it forward. Caitlin? What? We're not turning it. You're hitting the end of it to drive it this way, as I explained. Oh. Get the pipe. Put it back up. Let's try that again. You're hitting the end of that pipe. There you go. Wait. Okay. okay. Might be able to do it by hand now. It's why are, why do I feel like we're sharing a sink right here? Your face is filthy. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah right or just there. cleaned it off. Crunchy. Oh, there's a lot of spiders. Come back here and push this way. Push this way to me. One, two, three. Whew. We're gonna have to get that cleaned up. I swept out everything here yesterday, except for what was under the wheels. Blew everything out, because it's one thing you guys don't know about me. I hate working in a dirty garage. Not as much as I hate cleaning it, which is why I'm always working in a dirty garage, but I do, I hate working in a dirty garage. There we go. Going. Keep going. Uh -huh. Looks like our transmission's getting into our inside of our cab here. Oh, that's already twisted up. It's not locked. Not liking that. Oh, a little beetle. Good, good. Now we're getting into our cab, which I guess it's just gonna pick it up. Right there is about as far as I want to go. I don't want, I don't want those popping out of the hole and everything swinging backwards on me. Um, although I guess the drive shaft will probably keep it from doing that. But I'm going to try and keep the studs just in the hole right there. So, Caitlin, go ahead and lift. Keep an eye on this. Let's do like five or six lengths at a time. Oh yeah. All right, that should be plenty of room. Plenty of room for activities. So, assuming we got all the bolts out, we just need to pry that pan off of there. And we may need to take off the pickup tube. Hopefully we've got it up high enough that we don't need to do that. Now, the reason that Ford says this motor has to come out in order to change the oil pan is that they're wanting to keep you from getting oil intrusion into the gasket because the gasket is just silicone. No rubber gasket, no felt gasket, just a bead of silicone all the way around the block or the top of the pan. And so they don't want it where oil can actually drip down through there and get into that silicone and create a problem for your seal. Now we drained the oil out of that truck almost two months ago. So hopefully any residual in the crankcase has already made its way into the pan 
we should be able to spray it clean with some carb cleaner or brake cleaner, put fresh silicone back on it, sandwich it back together, call it a day. Now I've never removed a oil pan from a 7.3 Caitlin, but um, I imagine the same principles apply anywhere else I've worked, which is a big enough hammer will do just about anything. It's gonna have to go down and off the back. So you wanna go ahead and get behind it and be ready to pull it out once it comes um, all the way down. Like get under it? Yes, like underneath the vehicle. Not particularly. Okay, got I got it with my knee. I don't want your knee on it. Okay, go. Wait, this was really heavy last time. What was really heavy? When we pulled it out of the C10. No. Yes, it was. Here, use this to pry the back free. It's a lot of silicone. Yes, there is. It's going to take a considerable amount of scraping and cleaning. Good thing we're holding a gasket scraper. Holding it with my knee. And now I'll grab it. Actually, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to grab that. Hold on. I mean, we can, we can run the chain up a little bit. Seems like something binding this up. Uh, I think I need to take that dipstick tube out of there first. Yeah, let's do that. That bad boy is definitely getting cut right now. If I can find anything to cut it with. So. Pro tip, make sure you're cutting the dipstick tube, not the trans cooler line. Okay, well, turns out if you don't want to remove the pickup tube. Uh, gotta get the engine pretty high to get that pan out. So problem is it pinches between here and the bell housing on the transmission and you just can't get it out of there. So next up is uh, unknown hours of scraping and cleaning. So we're gonna get this whole surface cleaned up all the way around here. Little pro tip here, guys. If you got a drill, long extension, and one of these wire brushes, that will do a pretty good job of getting up here into these corners on a low speed. Just let it eat. Get your surface cleaned up just like that. Come back with some brake cleaner. Now, I don't know how you guys would do it, but I'm just gonna get some brake clean. Whoops. Come through here and wipe all this surface down one time. And then I'll go ahead and come back in with the brake clean and break everything off of here. Well, let me show you where the problem was here on this one, guys. That's not just paint flaking off of there. It's actually rust. And you can see like right there where it's wet there where it's wet. It wasn't coming from around the, the top. It's seeping through the rusty oil pan. It's a known issue with the 7.3 power strokes. 377,000 miles on this engine and about two feet of elevation. <laughs> oh boy, a pain in the butt. All right, guys, I'm gonna get the new oil pan unboxed here. Caitlin had uh, activity at church tonight with the youth group. So she took off a few minutes ago. I'm going to prep this new oil pan and uh, work alone when you have an engine suspended two feet in the air. Should be fine. All right, guys, oil pan's back on. Um, got to working with the silicone and realized I didn't have my camera running, but I was already putting down a bead of silicone. So you know the formula here. Way too much is just enough. So you want to have a little bit squeaking out around the edge pretty consistently all the way around. Caitlin's still gone, so I'm gonna have my wife run this chain hoist for me. And I'm gonna get this set back down here, so. Well, you guys can't see me right now, I'm underneath the truck, but you remember when I told you I didn't want these two bolts popping out of these holes? 
Well, this is why. Run it down more. I have a tube right here. I, I, yours is going to have to go back up. I'm just trying to get this. Just don't crush anything you can see. But you shouldn't be. Yeah, you should be all right. All right. We're going to get these two bolts here over about a half inch. So pick up our rear end. Too far. Do I come push on this jack this way? Ready? Huh? Okay, now turn the jack, let it down. Perfect. Keep going. Oh, got enough tension off of it, the door's loosened up. You know what I should have done while we had that up in the air? Just clean that cross member off and paint it. That would have been too forward thinking. Shucky darn. Well, next guy will have to do it. <laughs> hey, that the old oil pan? Yeah. You showed up finally after all the work is done. Start calling you blister. Is it, was it also full of moths? <laughs> no, it was not also full of moths. <laughs> There you go. A little bit of moths. Are those moths? Those are moths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Look how well preserved they are. I'm actually impressed. It's very clean except for the leaf that blew in it. It's dusty, so it looks dirty, but. <laughs> it's dirty, but. Let me show you. Do just a swipe down here. Probably should have used my clean finger to do that. Let's try that again with a clean finger. You can see it's pretty good. Generally speaking, if you can take diesel engine oil, you got some on your finger, and you can wipe it off and not leave your finger black, it's pretty clean oil. Even if the oil itself looks kind of black. I also did a little bit of inspecting off camera, Caitlin, of the, the crank and the uh, the rod bearings. I don't really know how much there should be or shouldn't be. They seem pretty consistent all the way through. Just wondering what you think. Just broke out the old feeler gauge here. It looks like the rod bearing lash is pretty good too, which I know you're super excited to hear, right? Guys, I know that you know that this is a little bit different episode for us. It's our first sponsored episode, and there's a little bit more product detail and interaction with what we're doing in the garage with the product that we're using rather than just the work that we're doing. So I appreciate you watching this far, and if you watch this far, you're probably one of those guys or gals who's interested in supporting the channel in other ways than just watching our video. If that's you, I'm going to encourage you to go to CrossroadGarage.com, snag yourself one of these brand new t-shirts, Jack of All Trades, Master of Most. That probably is a fitting description for 38% of you. Additionally, you could consider supporting the channel on a monthly basis through our channel membership for $1.99 a month, giving you access to behind the scenes footage, special member only videos, a once a month live stream with Caitlin and I, and a 15% discount anytime you order anything from CrossroadGarage.com. Thanks for watching. Let's get this pushed back in the garage so we can finish hooking up the plumbing on this Franz bypass filter. What do you say, A? Eh? One, two, three. Oh no. It's all right, we're good. Whew. Did you see how that new suspension bounced though? It's good. Probably wanna make sure that that's tight before we move it and officially install it. Actually, that does remind me of something though, Caitlin, that filtration system, because it's a pressurized element, can actually be mounted at any angle. So that's cool. Now what you see in front of you here, minus the Ford Motorcraft filter, is a universal setup. So you've got hose, hose cover, the filter and the element, we've got the synthetic element installed already. Random size, step up, step down, fittings, um, hose clamps, attachment screws, extra gaskets for your filter element housing, the whole deal. 
This and this are specific items that will be ordered in addition to the universal kit for different elements. So this comes in three different sizes. This is an adapter plate for your filter. This goes right up against the, the block or the filter housing. This gets screwed in that way, holding it tight, and then your filter actually goes on below it here. And you can see what it does is one of these holes passes out, the others are just passed through into your filter. On the universal filtration kit, this is everything you get, minus the adapters I already mentioned. And this right here, this is everything that you're gonna need to install it. It's a pretty quick job, pretty simple job. And if we're lucky, Caitlin, we're gonna be done here in about 20 minutes. What am I saying? I'm a Baptist preacher. I don't believe in luck. I believe in God's providence. And so should you. All right, so let me tell you what we're doing here. Uh, we're turning our x-ray vision on so we can see through everything we're looking at. All right, now with a light in here, and the rag out of the way, you can see where our return line is gonna go. And in here, return line is gonna be plumbed right back into this port right here. And the supply side, Caitlin, is gonna come from this guy right here. So this is a high pressure service port on the filter housing, which runs to the oil cooler, which is right here. And this little plug right here, we're gonna back out and put a, a barbed port in to just feed it directly back into the crankcase. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So we need a wrench for this one. And that one over there looks like it's an Allen wrench. All right, while well, Caitlin runs that fitting out of there, looks like it's not an Allen, it's a square fitting. I don't know if it's three eighths or a quarter. I can't really see too well in there, but I'm gonna go figure that out. She's gonna run that plug out of there. And we'll, uh, I don't think you should have oil draining out of there. Should all be out of the oil cooler by now. What is it? What is it? Yeah. It's a thread sealant, so it doesn't leak. Pretty thick stuff, actually. Cause this isn't like a flared fitting. There's no O-ring. Just using some pipe dope. All right, you're gonna need a deep well socket here, Caitlin. So take this one, put it on your quarter inch ratchet and just snug that up. Don't strip it, get, trying to get it super tight. Just get it snug. All right, plugs out. Now, believe it or not, Caitlin and I know a thing or two about a thing or three when it comes to worn out bearing surfaces. This is an 8BA flathead, one of the more desirable blocks you can get, and it had a four inch mercury crank in it. Kind of a hot rod thing. But you know what wasn't hot rodding? Bearings with no bearing surface left on them. That's actually what happens when you have an inefficient oil filtration system for your engine. Years of running this machine without proper filtration had left this engine locked up tighter than the Bluetooth headset section at a Love's truck stop. Now, when you're considering oil for your system, there are three things you want to concern yourself with. First, viscosity, which my wife doesn't think is a real word, but I assure you it is. It's right here in the data sheet. In most engine oils, the viscosity, or the ability for oil to stick together when it separates between surfaces, is going to break down over time. But using a full PAO oil, polyaolefin, that's what that stands for, which is what Hotshot Secret Black Diamond 15W40 diesel engine oil is, is a great way to sustain your viscosity in your oil. You're also gonna be concerned with alkalinity or how acidic your oil is. The total base number booster, TBN booster from Hotshot Secret, raises that alkalinity level to remove the acidity so that there is less corrosion that takes place in the oil system of your engine. And finally, contamination. That's what the bypass filtration system is for from France. That's gonna remove 96% of the contaminants in my oil. The 4% that remains in your oil system, that's gonna be smaller than two microns, and that's gonna be things like soot from your exhaust. Diesel oil is black. Some diesel oil that's black is actually pretty clean. More about that before we're done today. Now, before we go any further, I'm just gonna address the elephant in the room. The France filter comes with two different filter elements, cellulose or paper, and the one we're using synthetic. Now somebody in the comment section is going to say something about using a toilet paper roll and a paper filter element. Let me just point out to you that this filtering system from France has been around for 70 years. 
and has been a leader the entire time in bypass post filtration. And the truth of the matter is, doesn't matter if you're looking at a fuel filter or an oil filter from any other manufacturer, what's inside of this metal case with a wire cage is paper, cardboard. If it's Fram, I don't know, it's like kitty litter or something. This filtration system is a metal case with, in this case, a synthetic element and a mesh filtration system at the top so that nothing gets out of that canister that shouldn't. Now, this is a universal kit and there isn't much we're doing about any of this that's factory. So we're gonna take this just temporarily mounted on this side because right here, we're only about two and a half feet above the two ports that we just installed down here by the oil filter. So I'm gonna turn this around upside down. Super strong magnets. That does come with bolts. You can bolt to the firewall or wherever else you're gonna put it. Caitlin's gonna step in here and take the hose that's supplied from the universal kit. We basically just cut it in half. We'll measure it when we get down there to make sure that we have the appropriate length. But she's gonna throw these hoses on here using the supplied oh. hose clamps. What? You're wet. Yeah, it's hot here today. Muggier than an Amazon rainstorm. So I know some of you are gonna be, I'll say, skeptical about a free product being used on a YouTube channel. We've decided that we don't do review videos, guys. We're only gonna be showing you products that we actually are willing to use, put our name behind, and put to the test of our own experience. And the fact is that there's science to back up everything that I've told you about this filtration system. 96% of contaminants removed, two micron filtration, makes your oil better than the day you poured it out of the jug when it was brand new. There's science to back all that up, but my own experience is what we're leaning on here. And when we began looking for fluids and filtration system for Caitlin's truck, I knew Hot Shot Secret was the first place I wanted to talk to. If we wanted free stuff to load this build up with, I'd start responding to all those emails I got from John Wang over in Shizang, who's wanting to send me his number one bestseller car stereo or LED headlamps or whatever it is. This is an Ohio-based company. And as you know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, we're an Ohio-based family. So we're working with someone local, we're working with somebody that we've used before, and we're working with somebody who says, I've got a product that works. I believe them because every other product I've used from them also works. You done yet? No, are you? No, not really. Now remember guys, the bypass filter from Franz is not just for diesel engines, it's also for gas engines. And Caitlin, the guys over at Franz just told me that they're working on a micro bypass filter system to be used on lawnmowers, ATVs, and side-by-sides. Well, that's convenient, because you already don't change the oil on those. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Now, if you're like me though, you probably have come up with a number of excuses over the years for not changing the oil in your car, or truck, or ATV, or lawnmower. For me, it's often because I don't own it long enough to require an oil change. Case in point, the Cherokee from last week's video. Already sold. No oil change. We've been dying since we got this giant container to use this dispenser. So Caitlin is going to fill, easy. Caitlin's gonna fill the oil filter with uh, 15W40 here, nice and easy, let it flow. Now the question for you guys is, do you pre-fill your filters? or do you not fill your filters? I have a pre-fill guy. Let me know in the comments what you do. Poke that more. There we go. <gasps> Dad. Yeah, it really flowed there at the end, didn't it? See you on the other side. The filter's over here, Caitlin. I know, I'm working over there. Definitely gonna spill that. I am not. Eh. This is not going the right way. Well, you are spinning it the right direction. You just no, don't have it straight. I do have it straight. You guys are noticing these hoses here. Um, obviously, we're not gonna leave them like that. We left them as long as they possibly can be because I'm thinking at this point, that filter is actually gonna end up going back and down and being mounted on the frame rail. It's just like really like hand tight, right? Like as tight as you can get it with your hands, yes. Do I need to tighten it after that? No, just get it as tight as you can with your hands. All right. Oh, I. This happens every single time I put engine Go ahead and oil. put that in. That's gonna be- Engine and oil? 
One gallon is four quarts. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, hey, 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 hey. You got your little foil thing here in front of it. And tip it sideways. Why? Because then it doesn't go glug, 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 glug. It just flows. Wait, why? Why? Because air. Now, in addition to being an excellent garage floor lubricant, the Black Diamond Outlaw 15W40 improves horsepower up to 3% and fuel economy as well up to 3%. Scientifically proven. Now, we've got 15 quarts of oil in the system, which is what a 7.3 requires, but it's going to take an additional quart to fill this filter element. So this would normally be the point in time where you would start the engine, let it run, get up to operating temperature, check your fluid level, check for leaks, make sure if this is getting warm, you confirm that you've got oil flowing through the system. But we can't do that right now because we don't have our standalone harness back yet. We've got a guy out in California building us a standalone harness so that we can run this with an independent IDM and ECU. And we aren't going to have that back for a few more weeks. So if you guys want to see this bad monkey run again, make sure to subscribe and follow us as we work on it. Because this thing will probably almost definitely start running again one day. Now, in the weeks ahead, guys, we're gonna be back working on this thing, getting fabrication done to get this cab finally mounted in the proper position. Gotta go forward about seven, eight inches from where it's at there. Now, if you've been watching for a while, you know that for the last six weeks or so, we've been moving kind of slow on this. Part of that was, for my normal job, I was out of the country for half the month of August. But we're looking forward to really turning the heat back on on this, so make sure you're subscribed if you wanna watch the full build on Caitlin's 41 Ford. She's gonna have her license by the end of the year, and this is gonna be the first vehicle she drives. Pretty cool if you ask me. But in those upcoming episodes, we're gonna be doing a bunch of mechanical work too. We're gonna to be adding a cooling system and of course we're gonna be using Hotshot Secret 5050 coolant here, the extended life 150,000 mile coolant. We're gonna be using their Blue Diamond ATF. This has a ZF6 manual transmission in it, but the transmission fluid that it calls for is actually a Mercon V or five. I don't know if that's a letter or a Roman numeral. We're gonna be using that in the transmission, doing a full fluid change on that. We're also gonna be putting in some of their racing gear oil. Now this is the heavy duty gear oil. It's actually a little bit heavier than what Ford calls for. So we're looking forward to doing a rear end gear swap, checking out that rear pinion to see if it's in any good shape or not. And of course, what we're using in Caitlin 7.3 is the Black Diamond 15W40. Now let's deal with the question that was asked at the beginning. Are you gonna be able to turn your black diesel oil back into that golden honey that flows out of the can every time you pour it in? Probably not. What you're dealing with with the diesel engine is a heavy, heavy soot load. And those soot particulates, those particles, are actually smaller than the two microns that this filter is going to be removing from your oil. So will the oil be cleaner? Yes. Will it look like honey again? No. Will it be better than it was when it came out of the bottle? Yes. Will you be able to show your friends and say, hey, look at how clean this oil is? Yes but also no, because it will be clean, just won't look like it. That excuse wouldn't work on your mom when she told you to clean your room when you're a kid, but when you're dealing with your friends on the engine here, you can tell them what you need to tell them. And Hotshot Secret has you backed up with all the science because everything they do is powered by science. Whereas here at Crossthread Garage and Salvage, everything we do is powered by, maybe it'll work, we could try that. Sure, let's do that.